I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure whether with this baggie I should be doing impressions of some sort of really sad, surreal puppet show. Run, Jimmy! Run! Or whether it should just be the Pope in outer space. There's just something about this. I don't know. I don't know. Chris, Chris, my friend, take a look at this, this Ziploc baggie. Make sure. Nothing weird about it, right? Just an ordinary Ziploc baggie. Yep. Okay. And for once, I'm not going to start my video by having you, um, uh, by going through and using the uh, riffle force or anything like that here. I'm just going to spread out the cards. Touch one. Touch one. Doesn't matter. That's one. That one right there. Okay. Right where you touch. you have any sense which card is? Any sense at all? Well, let's take a look together. It, Ten of Clubs. Nice card. Now, I'm going to isolate the Ten of Clubs. I'm going to take it very slowly, put it about, approximately, about halfway down through the cards. And I want you to cover the deck now. Go ahead. With the baggie. Slip the baggie over the pack. Okay? Like this, like that. Great. Only now, I'm going to give you a chance to focus the camera. Only now am I going to slowly push the ten into the middle of the pack. Okay? I'm going to square up the cards and look. Just like this. Keep an eye on the deck trapped inside the baggie. Keep an eye on it. Watch, watch. Just a shake. You're going to see only one card melt through the baggie. The distant misdirectional palm. Dynamite. This is a lethal technique. I'm going to show you a few applications with this. A card cake, card, a card cake application. It's a cake made entirely out of cards. You serve it at a wedding, everybody dies. Uh, I'm going to show you a card case application. Uh, I'm going to show you a card to pocket application. Uh, and what I love about this, I can tell you right now, one of the things I love about this is it is a test conditions magic trick. As soon as you know you got you have cards selected, they move around through the pack. Maybe you get into the top of the deck, you find someone's card. Cards changes. That's all cool. That's all real magic for sure. There's something about bringing in some. It almost becomes a scientific experiment. I have closed close-up shows. I have closed stand-up shows with this, and I love the fact that this packs in your back pocket or in your case or whatever, and it goes from this packs flat thing to now something. This image. This image of the isolated card, and they put the bag over your hand. I mean, it, it, if you were to go, if you were to um, want an, an archetypal dreamlike image that sort of shouted, there can't be any sleight of hand here. I mean, the magician is trapped kind of thing. This image shouts that. And this is the kind of thing that gives a hook because you can walk up to people and you can do six card tricks. And you and I can distinguish between twisting the aces and a card change and card this and card that. Uh, however, lay people don't. There's a whole, you know, they just a card trick, card trick, card trick. But as soon as you bring in something like this into it, all of a sudden it's a different kind of trick. It's also kind of a rare, I think you, uh, I bet in your collection right now, I bet you don't have many um, penetration effects, melting kind of tricks involving playing cards. Usually they're coins and other things, punch balls, whatever. Keys uh, could be the tooth of an almost dead warlock. Who knows? I was just going to say, every time I say warlock, Chris sneezes. It's something we discovered years ago, so that's why I deliberately threw that in there. I thought, I'm going to make him sneeze again. Um, oh, look, look how much steam is coming off my freaking mitts. I'm so warm, it's actually steaming up this uh, in, inside here. I'm just a warm mammal. It's a bit weird. Anyway, so let us, uh, I don't know if we need to drop down in, Chris, but let's first take a look at the, um, yeah, let's take a look at this uh, distant uh, misdirectional palm. I love this. Okay, so. So often, I see magicians try to come up with reasons for incorporating an action which is inherently suspicious. But the best misdirection you'll ever do, the best techniques, uh, very much a, a Di Vernon idea here, is to, um, within natural, organic, motivated actions, hide your slights within that. So if you were to take a card and say, I'm going to put the card about in the middle of the pack. As you say about in the middle, this gesture of going, oh, I'll put about half the cards on top. Oh, isn't that so perfect? Put about half the cards on top. So, let's look at how beautiful this is. I love this. This is an old technique, the distant misdirectional palm. 
So first what I did is I spread out the cards. I had Chris touch a card. So he touched a card, any one he wants, okay? And when I'm performing for real people, uh, if I'm not gonna use a force and it's something like this, I almost always give them a chance to do it again. Okay, go ahead, touch a card, that one, you're sure, that's the one you want. You, you wanna change your mind, try another. Half the time I find, about half the time they say sure. So I say, great, go ahead. And having given them that free choice in that moment, that affects my whole show. From that point on, not that they believe everything is real magic. Uh, won't someone change my diapers? It's not that they, they believe that, but the fairness of that really bleeds on over to everything else you do. So give people choices when you can, right? So change his mind this like this. Now I slowly, either you take it and move it on the top, or I just cut the cards there. And I like to ask people, do you have any idea what card it might be? Interesting, right at that point. Do you know the color? Do you know the suit? And of course, what am I doing? I'm getting ready for my double lift. And uh, sure, I do a strike double, I do a corner double, I do a few, I do a water wheel double. I'll teach it on here sometime. Uh, something I came up with years ago. But uh, here what I'm doing is I'm drawing attention here, saying so if any idea what card it might be, and as I'm doing that, my left hand is pushing off the top card, the thumb, just pushing off the top card, pulling it back and getting a pinky break, okay? Do you have any idea, and the deck is wrist killed slightly, do you have any idea getting that break so I can bring it right back on top and immediately find that break, that sweet, sweet break, okay? Two of hearts, I'm gonna isolate the two. Now, I don't wanna forget this, I'm gonna do it, we don't have to cut, I'm right here, boom! I don't wanna forget, I know a whole bunch of you uh, are amateurs or you're not semi-professionals, professionals, so you think twice about destroying cards. I respect that, however, the visuals and the emotional investment and even just the process of having people sign a card brings so much to your magic. So in this case, okay, notice that in this case, at this point, he's touched a card. I can do a double lift, okay? Strike, double, whatever I'm gonna do. And then I can sort of extend the pack here and sometimes I'll put my hand underneath it like this. Because if I do this, I find that sometimes people are tempted to take the card. They think, oh, he wants me to put my initials on it. So, but I find as soon as I do this, put your initial on the card. This gesture, immediately everyone knows, okay, so he's basically gonna be holding the deck for me while they put their initial on, okay, they put their initial on. Love that. And as I probably mentioned on the video before, there's another level here too. As soon as I've found this so many times, people will look at the marker because their assumption is that's gonna wipe off. He's not gonna destroy the whole deck because now he can't play pinochle with it. He's not gonna destroy the whole deck for us, is he? Why, yes I am. People, that registers with people. It's kind of magical in and of itself. So they've marked the card. Right? I turn over the double. I apparently take their card in a different card. And as I say, I'm gonna put about half the cards on top. I riffle, riffle, and then the top half sort of cleanly comes off. Okay. I'm gonna put about, and I grab the deck getting ready for the one hand top pop. I'm gonna put about half the cards on top and drop them down. So I, you have to be able to do a one hand top palm in motion with half a deck. It's not as much fun, okay? You're here, they see everything. And the one hand top palm, again, you'll find this uh, on another video of mine, um, is I'm gonna push with my pinky, push the corner, and it's gonna come up in my hand. The whole action is just done with the pinky. The, I'm holding the cards from above, okay, not too tight. I'm sort of holding them at my tips here. And by pushing with the pinky, the card pops up into the palm. It does take practice. So all focus is here. I love how isolated that is. I extend this to the spectator who's examined the baggie. They put the baggie around it. Right? Put the baggie around it like this. You can even have them quickly seal it up if you want. And this idea that only now do you slowly push that card in. They don't think, so the visuals, everything that you're doing shouts the card is still there. They know this much. Even if you did something, even if that's not maybe their card, their card's in the deck clearly. I love this, the visuals, the visual techniques sell this so hard. So now I go from here and I don't want the deck perfectly squared at this point because then my motivation to come over with my hand and square up the cards apparently, loading on the card, the motivation is not as good as if the deck is, and you don't have to say I'm gonna square up the cards, but after pushing it in, you can let them spread a bit on your hand, okay? Then come over, I've got the palmed card, I'm gonna drop it on the cards as I come up like this, and really make sure the motivation is there. It only takes a second to square a deck, just this. But that hand coming in and leaving quickly could be suspicious. 
So this is another example of how exaggerating the theater can look more, um, less suspicious. You're here. I come over here, square up the cards. Just take an extra beat or two. Hand on the side. You are so far ahead. They're convinced the card is in the pack in the middle of the deck. It's actually not in the deck. It's outside the deck, outside the bag. So in a close-up situation when there's only a couple of people around, I always would do this down on the table or even have someone hold up their hand so that when they catch it, you get a nice little scream, ideally, or some gasp, okay? But in a stand-up setting, I turn, okay? And again, as you turn, you don't want to flash the back of this. I just sort of go dip it down and come up. In a stand-up setting, you could do this with a just from here and let it dramatically fall to the floor, okay? It's here. Let's say in this instance, though, I'm gonna have it come down to the table, okay? So people are watching, it's there. I snap my fingers and maybe I snap. You could of course take a lighter, do a little bit of a wave here to warm up the plastic to see if maybe you could have the one selected card, not just melt through half the deck and end up on top of the cards, but maybe actually melt right through the baggie. So let's talk about this a little bit more. First, I developed this originally as a closing effect, as a closing phase for my ambitious card. How perfect comes to the top, comes to the top. In fact, now let's make sure that not only can this card not move, none of the cards can move. Let's put them in a baggie and still it melts down through. Okay, so that is the technique for the one hand, for the distant misdirectional palm. Where, are, what are some other applications you can do with it? Okay, let's take a look at this for a second. Let's get rid of the bag. Okay. Just in a card to pocket whether it's ambitious card or as a quick, uh, just a quick uh, phase, another routine. Being able to have the card, let's say sign card, let's say you're in a double lift position again. I just had it signed. You isolate the card inside. We know about that. Say, look, I'm gonna try to make the card, I'm gonna put about half the cards. You can see about half the cards on top, approximately. I'm gonna try to make the card jump, okay? So again, we're doing this isolation. We do our double lift, sorry. We do our double lift, we put it in the middle of the deck, like this. We're here, and notice I divide the sphere focus because when you do this here and your tap, you don't want to keep it up here. You want to actually bring it up to your eye line. You bring it up to your eye line so all focus comes up here so that when you come down, there's lots of misdirection for the one hand top palm. But for the to the pocket, look at this. So you're here and you go, look, I'm going to try to make the card jump. Let's say ambitious card. This time, not just to the top of the deck, but watch. And you put your hand openly in your pocket. You push. I love that. I love the distance from here to here. They visually see it here one second. Then the next, you know, you're just, you, the very second you're pushing it in here, okay? The very second you're pushing it in here, it comes out here. One other idea I wanna show you with this down here on the table here is um, Ed Marlowe has a beautiful, this is a classic where you palm the card, okay? You've got the card palmed and you make it appear in the card case. And the action here, and I taught this on another video, the action here is you want the case on the table with the half moon facing up, okay? You don't want it down. You want it facing up. You're gonna pick up, you've got the card palmed. You're gonna pick up the case, come over, okay? And turn over the case. That's sort of your motivation here, which is why, is you're gonna pick it up here, come over with this hand, turn it over in a continuing action, open the flap, and then apparently pull out the card from inside. Now, if you combine that with this insane, distant, misdirectional palm, where you've done your double lift, whatever, put it in a different card in the middle, right? Said about half the cards go, palm it off, drop it down. You pick up the case now. Love this flow. Just in case you're feeling a little awkward with a palmed card. Now you have a perfect motivation. Drop down, pick up case. And only now, do you, you can even wave the case over it, let's say, while pushing it in. And the card, the sign card, jumps from the deck to inside the card case. Mm. Mm. Coffee, huh? Lattes? I love them. I adore coffee. I swear, in this life, if I had to drown in something, I think it might be coffee. Ever since I had kids, those little buggers keep you up. Coffee's great. Mm, it's good. Thank you for watching. Do not panic if your one hand top palm is taking forever to come together. It is, it is a finicky little move, okay? And again, I have tiny hands. I have small, look, look. I know there's a bunch of you out there who go, I want you to see the comparison. Here's me with a palmed card. Put a card in your hand too. 
I want you to, I mean, poker size card barely fits in my freakish ancient little paw. Okay, so if you got small hands like I have got small, if you got small hands like I got small hands, then hey, don't sweat about it, okay? Hope you have a great day. Uh, call your mom, call your dad, call your brother, call somebody for God's sakes. Tell them you love them or at least you like them. Call somebody. If you're not a subscriber, you should be subscribing by now. And if some of you are worried that my right hand is starting to suffocate, don't worry about that.